Hello travelers, today we're going to be talking about fans as it relates to mining and the most common misconception I see. A lot of people think a fan's a fan, airflow's airflow, what's the difference? Well, that's not the best way to look at it. There's a lot of different fans, they each have their pros and cons. There's an application for each fan. So how do you pick the right one? How do you know what to buy? Great example is something like this. This box fan here, this box fan will move a lot of air in free air, but you put something like a filter on one side, it'll drop massively. These are rated typically around 3000 CFM or so. They go up and down from there. And I've seen people measure the airflow of these at a thousand or less with a filter on it. I've seen as low as four, five, 600 with a particularly restrictive filter on one of these box fans. So you may think I have 3000 CFM because I have a box fan, but it might only actually be delivering four, five, 600 because of your environment. And why is that? Static pressure. The filter will cause this fan to struggle to be able to pull air in or push it out. The motor is in size to be able to push more power. And the blades, the pitch, the design of the fan isn't designed to be able to push in resistance. They're made and optimized for free air sitting in the middle of a room. So you take one of those, you throw it, say, in a window to cool off a room. It's not to say it won't move air. Obviously it will but the amount of air it moves will be less than you would expect from the ratings. Sometimes you could find ratings for various airflows at various static pressures, but not always. And that's the trouble. So how do you know how much static pressure you have in your environment? How do you know how much fan you need? And that's the difficulty. In something like this, these are 120 millimeter fans blowing on the back of these 3080s. You might think relatively free air, but this slot over here is a little restricted. It's a little harder for the fan to pull air in, and it's crashing into the car and other obstructions and stuff like that. And even this volume here, this air will come out and crash into here and cause some back pressure, some resistance, not zero static pressure. So this environment isn't very high static pressure, but you will not get the rated nameplate capacity of the fan in an environment like this. In fact, you pretty much never do. So the number that the fan says, the delivered CFM, it's kind of a misleading number. You could sort of compare it from fan to fan, but not always. Some fans are designed for more pressure than others. They all have very different designs. You look at something like this. It's not to say this is a bad fan, but this is a very low power fan, 0.05 amps, made for a computer, right? Cooling a heat sink or something like that, where you have a lot of access to air. And in the event of a little less airflow, well, it doesn't really matter. And a lot of times these might not even be running at 100%. However, in mining, people frequently run the fans full speed. Maybe you have fans in the back of your GPUs, server cabinet or the racking, and you're pushing the air through the GPUs. Maybe if they're running a little less than optimally, it doesn't really matter. But there's a lot of applications where it does. If you have something like this, a fan, maybe a little different than this, but a fan to push your pole air through a building, you need to ensure that you have the right amount of airflow to cool the building. Now, of course, with airflow, the coldest you could ever get is whatever the temperature is outside. That's assuming you have unlimited airflow, which that's unrealistic. Generally speaking, you're going to be warmer than the outside by a few degrees, maybe 10 degrees, maybe more, the much much airflow you have and how much it's worth, really. It depends on the temperatures in your region, hardware, all that sort of stuff. Discussion for another video. However, if you don't have enough airflow, your temperature's gonna be super high. So how do you size the fans? How do you size the system? There's the difficulty. Usually, the best approach is approximate, estimate, guesstimate, which that's sort of an experience thing, or just way oversize. The only real downside with oversizing is if the fans can't throttle deep enough. Some fans, like these Delta fans, they don't throttle that much. And although they have a four pin connector called a PWM fan, and you can control the speed from something like this, a PWM controller. These are quite affordable. I'll put a link to various models of these things in the description. They're very useful. Some fans don't throttle that much and 100% to the lowest speed they go, the range isn't that wide. And they may not always rate that or tell you up front. Other fans, the range can be quite wide, 
like these are a great example they have a very wide pwm range for a high power fan like this and they tell you exactly the airflow at these different ranges they also give you a graph to show you the airflow into very static pressures so you can estimate your airflow in your environment that's nice so something like this would be a good option any uh, high power fan that has deep throttling capabilities because then you could just throttle it down and typically fans are actually most efficient somewhere in the range of half speed maybe higher maybe lower depends on the fan but a lot of times a fan that's overrated but slowed down will be more efficient than a lower power fan run at full speed something to watch out for now some fans will give you a performance characteristic curve typically called a pq curve and you could estimate the optimal efficiency point for your fan but this is very hard to find a lot of times you could generate this data yourself but again can be quite difficult and problematic for most so that's sort of off the table now some fans like this more industrial style fan a shutter fan will give you air flows like you can see here this is airflow into zero static pressure an eighth inch water column and a quarter inch water column that's one of the units that are used for static pressure these might be in pascals or bar they've used several different units but they're all convertible from one another and this guy the largest model the 36 inch version of this fan with no static will move 6100 cfm however with a quarter inch of static pressure 2600 so that's less than half the airflow that's trouble and now in my environment here for example these fans here running at full speed because the static pressure will depend on speed the more air you try to pull through an opening the more resistance it'll face but you can see here's the intakes here right same size intakes there's two of them and the exhaust is the same size and there's louvers on the other side so it's like a angled aluminum shutter thing so these fans have resistance on that side as well as this side they need to push air into angled slats i measured around 48 pascals from inside to outside using one of these a differential pressure meter stick the tube outside the other port is inside tells you the pressure drop right so it says that this building is being depressurized at around 48 pascals and these are full bore estimating there's going to be some pressure drop on the other side too that these fans will face probably around total 60 pascals which coincidentally is right around a quarter inch of water column so in my environment this fan at around 6000 cfm would be facing around a quarter inch water column of static pressure so that means this big 36 inch fan they say it's 6000 cfm i'd be getting closer to this number 2600 so that's an issue when you think maybe your calculations say one's enough inevitably you might need two or even three and this is my environment here with no filters there it's just a screening so i still get some little bugs and stuff like that mostly not an issue however if you really want good filtration they could add a lot of static pressure a good filter could add easily 50 pascals or 100 pascals which on a fan like this is way off the chart i'd be pushing probably a thousand cfm or less on this fan that says six thousand so that's a big issue totally screws up your efficiency here you could guesstimate oh six thousand cfm over this amount of power and it looks like a good bet however when you actually take your system into account those numbers fall apart that's a trouble something to watch out for and it can be quite difficult to estimate how much static pressure you're going to face so it's sort of a approximation a guesstimation now in place you could use inexpensive tools like this guy to measure the airspeed and using that you can measure the airspeed through here and if you check that it's relatively even throughout the area you could plug it in the calculators and figure out how much airflow you're getting through this volume and you can estimate how much air this fan is pulling through the building so you could use that as a benchmark to maybe 
further educate yourself or guesstimate how much you need. Just kind of set it up as a benchmark or a baseline. And you could also get things like this, pressure meters, there's digital ones, the analog ones are kind of inexpensive and can be more accurate for low pressures. These work great, give you an indication of your current system pressures, but of course they only work in environments where you could seal one side from the other. So in this environment, you know, we got a small room here. There's the outside on the other side. There's a window there I could stick a tube out. It's easy to do, not always possible, but something to keep in mind, static pressure is a real killer. It's a typical thing that causes your fans to not work as well as you think. Something to keep in mind, you really gotta watch out for. Until next time, stay hashing.